Howdy, it's Kyle with part two of the first round of Geography March Madness 2021, a tournament-style competition that puts the American and Canadian states, provinces, and territories in a competition to see which one is the overall best. Check out the previous videos in this series to get caught up, see what's going on. You can go to my website, geographyking.com, to print off a bracket, see the rules, and see what kind of stuff is in this bowl I'm about to pull from. So, the first matchup in this video is Texas, the highest seed today, versus the Northern Mariana Islands, a U.S. territory out in the Western Pacific. I'm going to draw a category from here. It's best three out of five in this round. Ten. Ten is the... <laughs> The largest company headquartered there. Well, Texas certainly wins this one, but let's get the official places. So we're talking Exxon Mobil in Texas versus the B2 contractors in Marianas. Of course, Texas is going to win this category. Marianas only has 50,000 people, so you're not going to have any big companies headquartered there. Texas goes up 1-0. 16 is the next category. Grain production by 2019 revenue. Uh, Texas is certainly going to win this one. It's not the biggest grain state in the country, but the Marianas are so small. Tropical islands, you're not going to grow any kind of you know, grain stuff there that's of any importance. So uh, Texas goes up 2-0. Um, tough draw for these small uh, territories in the first round. 12 the tax give to take ratio. Well, this is also going to be easily for Texas because uh, the Marianas is almost entirely dependent upon the federal government uh, with the military there. So its overall tax take is much larger than what it's paying in. Texas is pretty even, uh, breaking even in terms of what it gives and what it takes. So Texas, big shock here, wins the uh, first round, 3 nothing. Northern Mariana Islands, you out. Oregon versus Utah, two beautiful western states. What do we got? 63. The best overall signature food. So uh, let me take a look at that. All right, for Utah, it's pastrami burgers, which is a pastrami sandwich mixed with a cheeseburger, but also funeral potatoes, which is a, a hash brown casserole with cream and chicken soup. For Oregon, it's Dungeness crab and marionberry pie. So I love all that stuff, but I have to go with Utah. Those pastrami burgers, that's, I mean, that's a match made in heaven there, pastrami and cheeseburgers. So uh, Utah goes up one nothing. 49. 49 is the best capital or parliament building. Well, uh, Oregon's capital building is a weird looking building. I think it's a nice building itself, but it's a terrible capital building. And Utah's is... A uh, really nice uh, stately building right on a high hill overlooking downtown Salt Lake. So I got to go with Utah on that. Uh, so Utah is going up 2-0 on Oregon. Can Oregon not get swept? 36. Natural disasters by total number since 2000. So I think Oregon's about to get swept, but let's check for sure. Okay, I stand corrected. Oregon has had actually fewer natural disasters than Utah since 2000. There haven't been as many major wildfires as I thought. They both had winter storms and snowstorms and windstorms, but it's been a little bit worse in Utah. So Oregon does not get swept. Can they keep it going with number one? Number one is GDP growth rate. I'm pretty sure this is going to be Utah, but let's get the final numbers. Oregon has the eighth highest GDP growth rate in the U.S., but Utah has the second high GDP growth rate in the U.S., so uh, Utah wins the round. Oregon, you out. So now it's Washington versus Montana, two other western states. We'll see how this one goes here. 22, total manufacturing output. This will probably be Washington, but let's get the official numbers. Huge win for Washington here, $63 billion annually in manufacturing. Montana only $3 billion, so uh, Washington goes up one nothing. 52. High school graduation rate, let's see. Okay, Washington has the 16th highest high school graduation rate in the country, but Montana is number one for high school graduation rate. So Montana wins that category. Brings it back up to 1-1. One, one. Nine. Statewide crime rate. Let's see how this goes. 
Montana ranks at the 29th lowest crime rate in the U.S. Washington ranks 38th lowest. So uh, Montana wins this category by having less crime statewide average than Washington. They go up two to one. Can they finish off Washington with 42 state or provincial parks? Wow, that's a tough category. I need to think about that one. Okay, they both have really nice mountainous state parks, but I'm going to go with Washington because they also have a lot of really nice coastal state parks as well as stuff along the Columbia River, uh, the Oregon border. So uh, Washington ties it up two to two. 45, what it's going to come down to, the best largest metro area. So we're talking Seattle versus Billings. Um, I like Montana, but Billings is no, so I gotta go with Washington here. Uh, almost any other metro area would be Montana, but I gotta go with Washington because Billings is it's a dump. So hey, Montana, you out. Next up, Massachusetts versus New Hampshire, going from the northwest to New England, two states that border each other. Let's see what we got here. Three. Household income. These are two powerhouses in this category. Who's higher? New Hampshire ranks eighth in the U.S. at $75,000 per year annual household income. Massachusetts ranks fifth in the U.S. with $80,000. So Massachusetts wins that category. They go at 1 0. 73. Nickname. So we're talking the Bay State or the Granite State. So. Uh, they're both kind of lame, really, but I'm going to go with New Hampshire, uh, the Granite State. Um, it's a little more unique to New Hampshire as opposed to this, you know, all states have bays. So uh, they're tied up 1-1. One, one. 28. Overall scenery. Well, this is another big win for New Hampshire here. You got some really nice mountains in the northern portion of the state, the White Mountains, the, the Presidential Mountain Wilderness. Um, just really nice stuff in northern New Hampshire. Uh, Massachusetts has some nice stuff on the coast, and the Berkshires are all right. But you got to go with New Hampshire for overall scenery, uh, much higher mountains, just, uh, you know, a little bit prettier. So New Hampshire goes up 2-1 over its big neighbors to the southeast. 11. Can they finish off Massachusetts with number 11? The largest private employer. No, they cannot. For Massachusetts, it's General Electric, and for New Hampshire, it's CNS Wholesale Grocer. So, obviously, Massachusetts is going to win that one. They tie it up 2-2. Two, two. So, it comes down to 15, which is dairy production. That's a pretty good category for these two. Okay, so I'm a little surprised that New Hampshire really isn't that big in dairy with Vermont next door being so big. Massachusetts is quite a bit bigger than New Hampshire in terms of dairy. So uh, Massachusetts goes on to win this round three to two. New Hampshire, you out. Illinois versus the District of Columbia. This is Washington, D.C., the capital region. I remember when I saw this was the first round, I was thinking, imagine if uh, corruption were a category. Illinois would actually win. Can you believe that? <laughs> We'll see what we can get here. 16, going back to grain production. So this is going to be obviously a huge win for Illinois. I mean, anything ag is not going to go well in terms of uh, for D.C. <laughs> Illinois is the number two state in the country for corn. Actually grows more corn than uh, Nebraska. So really easy win for Illinois there. That's just like a couldn't have been a better draw for them. 51, <laughs> lowest crime in the city with the highest crime rate. Well, D.C. is a city, Washington, so it's basically Washington versus Chicago. Okay, so this also goes to Illinois. Chicago is known for having a lot of crime, some of the issues in certain parts of the city, but most of the city is pretty nice. So the overall crime rate for Chicago isn't that bad. Uh, D.C. is a little bit worse, so uh, Illinois goes up 2 to nothing on D.C., Four. Poverty rate. Well, this is a pretty interesting one as well. Let's see what the numbers are. 
Illinois is right in the middle at 25th with a poverty rate of about 11.5%. D.C., if it were a state, would be 39th at 13.5% poverty rate. So Illinois sweeps D.C. Hey, D.C., you out. British Columbia versus Mississippi. Should be pretty interesting. Canada's first foray into this video. We'll see how this goes. 60. Best for a city or town weekend trip. Not a great draw for Mississippi there. Vancouver is amazing. Uh, Victoria is also amazing. So really, really easy win for uh, British Columbia on this one. Um, I mean, Jackson, Biloxi, I mean, no, no. All right, so. Nine. Statewide crime rate. Well, Mississippi is one of the worst in the U.S., and Canada in general is uh, much safer than the U.S., but let me get the numbers for sure. Actually, Mississippi isn't as bad as I thought. It ranks 25th, so right in the middle of the U.S., but... Um, Any time a state is going to go up against a Canadian province in terms of crime stuff, it's not going to fare too well. So uh, BC is going to win that category with a uh, lower crime rate than Mississippi. Uh, so BC goes up 2 nothing in the round. 21. 21 is total energy production. So we'll see who wins this one. Mississippi has a little bit of offshore oil, but not much else. BC has quite a bit of oil and natural gas and also a lot of hydropower. So... Very easy win for British Columbia in this one. So they sweep Mississippi. Yeah, Mississippi, you out. North Carolina versus New Brunswick. Another U.S. versus Canada one. We'll see if Canada can keep it rolling. 65. The best for overall music artists. So this is not the one where it's a single musical artist. This is best overall. So let's see. North Carolina has a pretty good list of artists that have come from there. you got the bluegrass legends, Doc and Merle Watson, jazz legend, John Coltrane, uh, Joe DeC, Ben Fold. So a pretty decent list there. I didn't recognize the names of anybody that's from New Brunswick. So not a big surprise there, but uh, North Carolina does go up 1-0. 66. Best single signature food. So let's see what they got. This was a really tough category for me because North Carolina has really great pork shoulder barbecue. The western portion of the state has kind of a ketchup-based sauce. The eastern part has a, a vinegar and pepper-based sauce. But New Brunswick is kind of like to Canada what Maine is to the U.S. It's the largest lobster producer. The lobsters there are even larger. Lobster casserole, all that. I mean, I got to go with New Brunswick. I love lobster. I mean, I love the barbecue in North Carolina too, but I got to go with New Brunswick. They're tied one-to-one. -one. 23 military bases so we'll see who's got the more important ones that's a brutal draw for new brunswick because north carolina is one of the most important states in the u.s for the military huge uh, army fort fort bragg huge military or huge marine base uh, camp lejeune so i mean easy win for north carolina there new brunswick isn't as important to the canadian military as north carolina is to the american military can north carolina finish off new brunswick with 27 Medical <laughs> medical research and development. Well, that's another tough draw for New Brunswick. Uh, the Raleigh, Durham, and Chapel Hill area, the research triangles, one of the top uh, medical research parts of the entire country. But I want to make sure there's nothing crazy going on in New Brunswick that equalizes it. Yeah, that's tough. I mean, North Carolina is very important in terms of medical research. It's just, it's, it's huge. So that's one of the biggest parts of the economy there. New Brunswick, much smaller state, doesn't have the big cities with the the big medical research lab. So North Carolina wins 3-1 in this round. So New Brunswick, you out. Next up, Wisconsin versus Nebraska. Two Midwestern powerhouses. How is this going to turn out? 33. Summer climate. Wow, they're both really, really similar. I'm going to have to go with Nebraska because... Uh, Wisconsin is going to be a little more humid, a lot more water. In the early part of the summer, you have a lot of black flies and fish flies, and it can just be kind of annoying. Nebraska is pretty much really nice all summer long. Not that Wisconsin's horrible, but 
you got to pick nits here. So I'm going to go with Nebraska's uh, summer climate over Wisconsin. Uh, puts them up one nothing. 75, that is the, the quarter category, I think. It is. So who's got the best state quarter? These are both pretty good quarters. I like them both, but I'm going to go again with Nebraska. I like that kind of simple scene there, kind of the homestead and the chimney rock. Um, so two subjective categories going against Wisconsin. Uh, maybe you can get one that's more objective and you can win. 61. Best for an outdoors weekend trip. Well, this is going to be Wisconsin because, you know, what makes it more humid, the, the water also gives it more of a, a better spot for an outdoors weekend trip. I think Nebraska is better for outdoor stuff than you might expect, but, it, you know, Wisconsin is going to be uh, much better for stuff. So uh, they're on the board two to one. Twenty six. Public K to 12 schools. I think they're both pretty good. We'll see who gets higher. All right, both of these states rank pretty high in terms of public schools. I'm using worldpopulationreview.com for the info here. It's a really good website for uh, geographic data. Um, Nebraska ranks 11th in the U.S. in terms of public schools, but Wisconsin ranks 8th. So they're both really good for schools, but Wisconsin wins. They tie it up 2-2. Is Nebraska going to blow a 2-0 lead? Number five, income tax. I think uh, I think Wisconsin is going to come out in this one. This was really, really close. These both have pretty similar income tax rates. They're both well above average, but Wisconsin penalizes married couples a little bit more for their income tax. So overall, Nebraska is a little bit lower. So Nebraska does win the round three to two. Wisconsin, you out. Up next is Florida versus Prince Edward Island, Canada's smallest province in terms of both population and size. 11, which is the largest private employer for the state. Uh, I'm not sure what they are, but I'm pretty sure Florida's going to win this one. Okay, so we're talking Publix grocery stores in Florida and BioVectra microbial fermentation in Prince Edward Island. Publix is way bigger, so Florida goes up one nothing. but you don't want me drawing that medical research one from here, Florida. Um, 59. Best for driving through on a road trip. Well, this is not going to be good for ones that are small, so Prince Edward Island is very small. Uh, wouldn't take very long to drive around the whole island. Uh, Florida, you know, got nice beaches all around. So uh, it's pretty good for a drive up and down the coast. So we've got to give the easy win to Florida here. So uh, they go up two to nothing. Um, see if you can finish off the sweep with number 61. Best for an outdoors weekend trip. So uh, these are pretty bad calls or pretty big, pretty bad categories for uh, Prince Edward Island, just being on its uh, sheer size. So Florida has a lot more stuff in terms of outdoor recreation, Everglades National Park, a lot of rivers, a lot of swamps, um, a lot more interesting outdoor stuff than you might think in Florida. So they go on to sweep Prince Edward Island. So PEI, you out. Okay, it's now Alberta versus Puerto Rico, the U.S.'s largest territory. A pretty interesting matchup here. 28 is best for overall scenery. Wow, this is tough. I need to think about this one. Okay, that's a pretty bad draw for Puerto Rico. It's a beautiful island, gorgeous tropical mountains and national parks and waterfalls and beaches. But I got to go with Alberta, the Canadian Rockies, Banff, and all the other national parks there. It's just truly beautiful. So, yeah, tough one for Puerto Rico to lose. But Alberta goes up one nothing. Good old number one. That is the GDP growth rate. Well, that's certainly going to be Alberta, but let's see by how much. Okay, I stand corrected. Puerto Rico wins this category largely because there was such a huge economic downturn after Hurricane Maria in 2017. So it has grown a decent amount since then. Um, so it's has growing more than Alberta. So uh, Puerto Rico ties it up. One to one. Alberta's uh, growth rate wasn't very much at all uh, up until 2019, which is the most recent data I'm using. 56. Cancer rate. So we'll see who does worse than this one. 
This is a really great category for Puerto Rico. It has a very low cancer rate. If it were a state, it would be the second lowest in the country. Alberta's is pretty average for the developed world, but it is much higher than Puerto Rico. So Puerto Rico goes up two to one on Alberta. 16. <laughs> Grain production. Well, this is a big one for Alberta, but we'll see by how much. Alberta is a major producer of wheat and also uh, of barley. Puerto Rico does grow some rice, but overall, uh, Alberta wins pretty big in the uh, grains category. Um, so they're bringing it up two to two. It's coming down to number eight, which is job growth rate. Well, we'll see if it, if it correlates with the GDP growth rate from before. So this does pretty much correlate with the GDP growth rate as well. Alberta has been struggling quite a bit with GDP and job growth. Uh, Puerto Rico, again, it got hit with Hurricane Maria pretty badly, but it has grown a lot since then. So population growth, GDP growth, job growth has all been bigger in Puerto Rico. They win the category. They win the round three to two. Alberta, you out. Up next is Quebec versus Rhode Island, Canada's largest province in terms of size versus the U.S.'s smallest state in terms of size. Should be pretty interesting. 15, dairy production. So we'll see how this goes. It's probably going to be Quebec. Okay, so Quebec is Canada's number one dairy producing province. Rhode Island, this being so small, has very few farms. This is a huge, huge win for Quebec. Uh, they go up one nothing over Rhode Island. 18, housing cost to wage ratio. So we'll see how this one goes. So this is another big win for Quebec. The household income is about the same in both Rhode Island and Quebec, but the housing values are less in Quebec. So your overall uh, housing cost to wage ratio is lower there. So uh, Quebec goes up two to nothing. Can they finish them off with number 10? The largest company that is headquartered in the state. So we'll see who gets this one. Okay, so this is a big win for Rhode Island here. CVS Health is headquartered there. Huge pharmacy chain. Uh, the largest company in Quebec is, is Coustard or Circle K uh, convenience store. It's a big company, but CVS is, is huge. So Rhode Island is on the board two to one. 22, total manufacturing output. So we'll see where this one goes. Quebec is really big in terms of aerospace. It's the home of Bombardier jets, uh, Rolls-Royce jet engines. Uh, just really big in manufacturing. Rhode Island doesn't really have much manufacturing at all. So Quebec wins the round three to one. Vive le Quebec libre. Rhode Island, you out. All right, next up is Indiana versus Manitoba, the last Canadian province to make a showing in the first round. We'll see how this one goes. Three. Household income. So we'll see who's got the highest one here. Okay, so this is a win for Indiana. Its household income is about $56,000 per year U.S. In Manitoba, it's $51,000 per year U.S. Indiana goes up one nothing. 46. Best second largest metro in the state. So that is what South Bend and Brandon. I don't know. Let me check this one. All right, so the second largest metro in Indiana is the South Bend Elkhart area, which is kind of rough. It's struggling. It's got really high crime. It's improved a little bit in recent years, but it's still kind of mm, uh, branded. It's kind of a you know, it's a kind of a prairie town, farm town. It's it's not that bad, not exciting at all. But I'm gonna have to go with Manitoba on this because South Bend is kind of rough, and Manitoba is just kind of a peaceful little prairie town. <laughs> so uh, tied up one one, number six here sales tax so again canada and us calculate this differently but we'll see who's got the higher one okay so this one goes to indiana which has the 24th highest sales tax in the us at about seven percent canada in general has higher sales taxes uh, with the combined federal and state uh, for manitoba being 12 percent, so pretty high um, so indiana goes up two to one can they finish off manitoba with number 51 Lowest crime in the city with the highest crime rate. Well, whenever you have a U.S. versus a Canada crime something, it's going to be Canada. But we'll see what the actual numbers are here. 
Okay, so to give you an idea just how much safer Canadian cities are, Winnipeg has about 750,000 people. It's the most dangerous city in Canada. It averages about 30 to 35 murders per year. Indianapolis has about 880,000 people. It has about 150 murders per year. So American cities are just much more dangerous. So uh, Manitoba wins this one easily, even though Winnipeg is the most dangerous city in the country. Uh, so Manitoba goes up two to one in this one. That comes down to 22. Total manufacturing output. So um, we'll see if Indiana can cut back into it with this one. All right, so big win for Indiana here. It's the sixth most important state in the country for manufacturing. Uh, over $100 billion per year annually. Manitoba only has about $5 billion a year. So Indiana ties it up 2-2. Two, two. Comes down to number 28, which is overall scenery. So uh, these aren't the prettiest places in the world. Uh, um, let me think about it for a second. Okay, I'm going to go with Indiana on this one. Got some nice wooded areas south of Indianapolis. You have the Indiana Dunes in the northwestern portion of the state. A lot of caves in the south and the southern portion of the state. So uh, it's not the most exciting uh, scenery in the world, but it is pretty nice. Uh, Manitoba is just, it's got some nice lakes and stuff. But overall, I got to go with Indiana on this one. So Manitoba, you out. Up next is Pennsylvania versus Vermont. Let's see what we got going on here. 45, the best largest metro area. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, Philadelphia and Burlington, they're on opposite ends of the spectrum in terms of, um, in terms of size. <laughs> so can't really call Burlington metro. I do like Burlington. Uh, it's a nice town, but I mean, I have to go with Philadelphia. It's just, and not because it's bigger. It's just, I mean, it's a big, vibrant city. Has a lot of stuff going on for it. A lot of great culture and uh fun stuff this i mean it's just got so much to offer so it's not so much that it's bigger than burlington just it's but because it is bigger it does offer more stuff so i'm going with pennsylvania uh one nothing over vermont 29 the best single site scenery so um pennsylvania is a it's a pretty state but there's no one particular part that's uh super gorgeous vermont is a, obviously a much smaller state but I would say overall, it's a prettier state. The Green Mountains are very nice. Lake Champlain, you just have a lot more uh, scenic beauty. So even though it's a much smaller state, you still got the more pretty scenery. Uh, so I'm gonna go with Vermont there. Uh, ties it up 1-1. One, one. 34, autumn climate. Well, these are both pretty good, pretty similar. Um, but I'm going to go with Pennsylvania because by the end of autumn, it is getting pretty cold up in uh, Vermont. Um, so it's, it's they're both nice in September. They both start off pretty nice. <laughs> but the, the, how the autumns end is a little bit differently. So I'm going to go with Pennsylvania, a little more pleasant for most of the autumn. Um, Vermont has a better fall foliage, but that's not what I'm talking about here. So Pennsylvania goes up two to one. Can they finish them off with 43? Oh, percent wilderness. <laughs> Whatever you get eastern states, there's really no wilderness. Um, uh, let me check this for a second, but it's probably going to be Vermont. Okay, unfortunately for Vermont, I was wrong. There's actually some decent wilderness in north-central Pennsylvania. Uh, some good wooded areas. Uh, Vermont, is it's got some nice woods, but most of it is small towns, and there really is not of actual wilderness, so... You know, North Central Pennsylvania is much more wild. So I have to go with Pennsylvania in that category. They win the round. Vermont, you out. Up next, it's Alabama versus Arkansas. Going back down south. 27. Medical research and development. These aren't two of the top states for it, but let's see who's got the most. Okay, this is a win for Alabama here. The University of Alabama, Birmingham is a really big major medical university. A lot of research going on there. A lot of clinical research and trial stuff in the Birmingham area associated with it. So not anywhere near as much in Arkansas. So Alabama goes up one nothing. Next up is number 20, population growth rate. Well, I'm pretty sure this is going to be Arkansas, but let me get the numbers for sure. 
Okay, Arkansas is ranked 26 in overall population growth rate. Alabama is ranked 31st, so Arkansas is growing a little bit faster. Uh, they go, or they get to tied up 1-1. 26. <laughs> well, public case of 12 schools. Well, we'll see who's got one better here. I'm using the stats from worldpopulationreview.com. Arkansas ranks 42nd in terms of public schools, but Alabama is 44th. So, uh, Arkansas, you win with your public schools. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> Arkansas goes up 2-1. to one. Can they finish off Alabama with 2 GDP per capita, so another uh, income type stat, but not the same as household income, though. Alabama ranks 45th in the U.S. in GDP per capita, $38,000 per year. Arkansas ranks 47th with $37,000 a year. So public schools and GDP per capita, they're both pretty pretty bad, but someone's got to win, 27. Oh, that's medical research and development, so obviously I'm not going to use that one again. That's the first time I've drawn a repeat. 37. For all the marvels. Natural disasters by total damage since 2000. Different than the total number. So we'll see who wins this one. Arkansas has had some Mississippi River floods in 2010 and 2011. Uh, some other floods as well. But Alabama has had Hurricane Sally and Zeta. A uh, big tornado outbreak in 2017 and really, really bad tornado in 2011 in Tuscaloosa. So uh, Alabama has been hit with uh, natural disasters uh, quite a bit more than Arkansas. So Arkansas wins this category. They win the whole round three to two. So Alabama, you out. It's time for Michigan versus South Dakota. What are we going to get here? 11. The largest private employer. Well... This is certainly going to be Michigan, but let's get the actual numbers. For South Dakota, it's the Good Samaritan Society. Nowhere near as big as Ford Motor Company. So obviously a huge win for uh, Michigan in this category. They go at 1-0. 60. The best for a city or town weekend trip. So, I mean, it has to be Michigan. I mean, uh, Sioux Falls is not an interesting, smells like bacon fat. <laughs> um, Rapid City is the nice area, but the actual city itself is pretty... Mm. Um, Detroit's not that bad, but you can pick all kinds of other towns in the state, whether it be Grand Rapids or the whole you know Lake Michigan shoreline. So there's, there's a lot more interesting stuff to see from a city-type standpoint in Michigan than South Dakota. So um, they go up two to nothing. Will Mount Rushmore State get swept with 27? We had this one recently. It's... Oh, boy. Uh, this is bad for South Dakota. Medical research and development. Uh, that's one of the biggest things right now in Michigan. Uh, Grand Rapids is, is huge right now for medical high tech and just, you know, all the stuff going on there. So uh, Michigan is one of the most important states in the country right now for medical research. So Michigan, you win the round. 3 nothing. You sweep them. South Dakota, you out. And the last matchup for the first round is Colorado versus Idaho. We've had Oregon versus Utah, Washington versus Montana, and now this one. A lot of Western states knocking each other out. 15, dairy production. So we'll see who wins this one. Okay, huge win for Idaho here. I didn't realize how big they were in dairy. It's, uh, it's only California, Wisconsin, New York, and Texas are ahead of it. And, and milk, not even all those. So Idaho goes at 1-0. 14. <laughs> livestock so uh the ag is on on display for these two states we'll see who wins this one okay this is a win for colorado here they're both pretty big in cattle colorado has a little bit more but there's very little hogs in idaho and there's a decent amount in colorado so uh they win this one tied up 1-1 one, one. 23 military bases well this is certainly going to be colorado with the air force academy uh, but let me make sure there isn't anything I'm missing here. Okay, this is a pretty easy win for Colorado here. you got Buckley Air Force Base outside of Denver, uh, Fort Carson outside of Colorado Springs, plus the Air Force Academy. So just much more important state in terms of the military. Uh, Idaho is not that important uh, for defense. Can Colorado finish off Idaho 
with number 45. The best largest metro. Ooh, wow. Uh, I need to think about this one for a second. This is a pretty tough category. I had to sit and think about this one for a while. I like them both a lot, Denver and Boise. So, I mean, Boise is really cool. Uh, it's been growing a lot. It's got some interesting nightlife. It's much more exciting than you might think. But I have to go with Colorado and Denver here. Uh, it's just it's one of my favorite big cities. Has a lot of stuff going for it. A lot of fun and just like it a lot. So, you know, a tough category for Idaho to lose in because the capital city is pretty nice. But Colorado, you win the round three to one. Idaho, you out. So that concludes the first round. We have 32 winners moving on to the second round. The video is going to be posted March 15th. Hope to see you there. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up to let me know you approve and subscribe to this channel if you're interested in learning more about U.S. geography. I'm talking about cities and counties and states and ranking them as all kinds of different categories. I'm talking about cross-country road tripping, just going over geography from a little nerdier type perspective. But yeah, thanks for watching. Geography King, signing out.